to be started. The Israelites lived that exact way. They got arrogant about being the chosen ones. And they said, we can go live our life any way we want. And we're the chosen ones. And we're still going to be okay. Were they? How often did we see God having to punish them? Brings the Babylonians along, sends them off to exile. They come back from exile. A few generations later, another group comes along and sends them off to exile. Guess what? It's not any different today. If you buy into that lie, you can get trapped. We live in a world that struggles with morality. As a kid growing up, all I heard time and time and time again was that you can't legislate morality. And yet we do. We live in a, in a time in our existence where some Christians are questioning whether the moral laws of the Bible are appropriate to our modern world. Ever hear say, someone say something to that effect? Oh, that's outdated stuff. The writers of the Bible didn't understand our modern world. Yeah, they did. They did. They were living in a modern world when they wrote the Bible. It was their modern world. It might not look like our modern world, but guess what? All of the sinful natures were there. All of the issues that we deal with were there. And there, there are people I've talked with for decades that are sitting here saying, well... I don't know whether those laws of the Bible are appropriate for today. I mean, only one wife. And I'm not talking about having multiple wives at the same time. Because when I grew up as a kid, that one wife was a, was a moral thing about, about divorce and all of those things. And that's not where I want to go with that. But the reality is, is that that's one of the pieces that I hear about. I should be allowed to go gamble every, every so often. Different things like that. I want to make this statement crystal clear. Maybe I should take my mask off to make it crystal clear, but I hope I will enunciate my words clearly. As long as time exists, there will never be a day or an hour when morality is inappropriate. God will not approve of amoral actions or immoral actions. That's not who he is. He will never approve of that. Scripture shows us that again and again and again. In 1992, a Barna Research Group surveyed on what Americans believe confirmed that we're in danger of becoming a nations of, nation of relativists. The Barna survey asks, is there absolute truth? Amazingly, 66% of American adults responded that they believe that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Different people can define truth in conflicting ways and still be correct. Really? Can they? I had an argument one day with somebody about that. They said, that's your belief, that's your, that, that's your morality. My morality is something else. And I said, you're right. I said, my morality says I can kill you, and I'm not going to have any problem with it. And they said, you can't do that. I said, why not? It's my morality. 
Now that's a ridiculous statement that I made, and I made it on purpose. There are absolutes out there. The figure raised, 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 raised in 1992. That figure of 66% went up to 72% when you looked at ages 18 to 25. Now think about that. These people, the 72%, would be between 47 and 54 today. And I found it interesting that Francis Schaeffer at exactly this, right around that same time frame said, if there are no absolutes by which to judge society, then society is absolute. I don't know about you, but God called me called us as his believers to be in the world and not of it. That means the society doesn't get to dictate what's right and wrong. He does. And when I talk about this morality, you notice I haven't really pointed specific fingers at what does it mean to live a moral life? Do you know why? Because I think we know what a moral life looks like. I have faith that every person sitting here, every person listening, has read enough of their Bible and has lived enough of their life to understand what, it, what morality looks like and what it doesn't. So I guess the reasonable closing for this message is this. The universe that we live in may be moral, but the fallen people wandering about aren't. At least not all of us. In fact, probably most of us. Over the past few decades, we've, we've been moving further and further away from any kind of moral absolute to stand on. I tell you this right here is the moral standard that we need. And I need to move my papers for a second because this is the moral standard. hard to imagine that the thousands and thousands of laws that we have in our country all stem from 10. All started from 10. In 1963, the year of my birth, 65% of Americans believed that the Bible was literally true. By 1992, it had dropped to 32%. I, I, I couldn't find, and to be fair, I didn't actually want to go digging any deeper. But I do wonder what it is today. If we're seeking to live as mature people, not just mature Christians, but mature people, we need to seek, we need to be about mature moral living. Because that's what God calls us. It's part of the maturing process for us. And again, I'm not preaching this because I think I'm sitting in front of a whole lot of people or, or, or talking to people on the camera of a whole lot of people who are immoral. Don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm saying. But maybe we need to look in the mirror, because I do. I look in the mirror. I ask myself, am I where I need to be, morally speaking? I read a story, and I'll close with this. I read a story about a, a man almost 100 years ago now, he was a lawyer in England. And he had a, he had a client who was on trial for murder. And he truly believed his client was innocent. And as they got halfway through the trial as they were going through and all of the witnesses were coming forward, he would attack those witnesses and he put on a firm defense and then he sat down with his client halfway through the trial and his client confessed to him that he did indeed commit the murder. 
And this man was a, a believer. He was a Christian. And he told, in talking with the man, he says, you put me in a difficult position. He said, I don't know whether I should tell the authorities or whether I should continue to defend you. And the man looked at him and he said, I thought, I figured you'd continue. My, my thought was you would continue to defend me vigorously. And that's what he did. The man was still convicted. Now you might look at that and go, is that the morally right thing to do? I'll leave that to you to ponder in your own hearts, whether that was the morally right thing to do. But I will tell you this, in lawyers that I've talked to, they never asked their client if they did it. Not defense lawyers. Especially not ones that are going after murder cases and those, they don't ask. More often than not, they just don't. God wants us to live moral lives. And if you're wondering if you're there, Tomorrow morning or late this afternoon or whenever, look in front of a mirror and just kind of spend a moment looking at yourself and saying, that person there, are they a moral person? Or are there some little things we need to tweak? If you're like me, it's more attitudinal than anything else. It's not that I'm blatantly out there trying to be immoral. But I do find my attitudes are often not where they need to be. And maybe that's where you are too. But in order to be the mature believers God intends us to be, we have to be always wrestling with this in our lives. Till we get it right. And the problem with that is even if you get it right today, there's still tomorrow. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you. I trust, Father, that the words you gave to me to speak today were words that resonate with my friends and my neighbors here and, and online, Lord. That, Father, uh, we understand that we are called to live by absolutes. That there are absolute rights, absolute wrongs. And Father, we don't live in a world that says that. Even though our universe may be a moral universe, Lord, our world is not. Help us, Father, to have the strength and the understanding of how to do that day by day. It's easy to follow the group. It's tougher, Lord, to go against it. And yet you call us at times to do that. And so, Lord, on those times, we pray for your strength. Because it's hard sometimes to, to, to stand alone. But we know with you, we're not alone. Father, again, I just praise you and I thank you for who you are and how you draw us closer to yourself and mature us day by day. In Jesus' name, amen.